temperatures around 81, so we're well below average, and we continue to be. We've been below average for about the last week here. Monday on our, on our radar, nothing on Storm Team 4 radar. We're not seeing any shower activity. The nearest rain is down toward the Carolinas, trying to move up here, but we've got high pressure that's going to help to not only keep the rain away from our area today, but it's also going to send Irma. Watch this. You can see it kind of moving back to the west. It's all also going to send Irma back into parts of Tennessee and Kentucky, that area of high pressure, uh, really trying to protect us here. But still, Irma, a uh, tremendous storm bringing a lot of rain, tornadoes, and also extreme flooding. Jacksonville and Charleston really under the gun today, and now it's really Charleston and the parts of South Carolina, also parts of Georgia underwater right now as a result of that storm moving on in here. Speaking of underwater, I want to show you a little bit uh, something else here. Amelia and I have been talking about this all day. The blowout tides that happened around the Tampa area and so many other those uh, those estuaries down in the parts of Florida. More on that. Here's Amelia. Yeah, Doug, if you're on social media at all this weekend, you saw these photographs. This water should be here in feet. There are people out there on bikes just walking around taking photographs. And in fact, we have better video drone video of a look at the water that is out to sea. Typically water in that area would be coming maybe over the road at that point. So why is this happening and why did we see this in so many areas? You can see folks out there just walking around again. That is Tampa Bay. That's where people should not be able to walk. So take a look at this explainer. These are how winds are around a storm system. They're moving counterclockwise into the storm. And this is kind of where Irma was yesterday afternoon in relation to Tampa. So what happens is the wind direction actually sends that water out into the ocean. As the storm starts to move toward the north, north, we see the winds change direction and it sends all of that water back into the bay. And that's when we start to see the flooding. So we talk about that extreme flooding in Jacksonville, Doug. Well, Earlier today, they were getting all of that onshore wind that was bringing lots of flooding in from the ocean. And then as the storm starts to move up toward the north and west, just as you were saying, we get water coming off of the St. John's River. So kind of a little bit of an explainer as to why we saw some really cool photographs and why exactly that happened. Yeah, and all the flooding down there, too. Now, a lot of people are telling me on my Facebook page, Tell Jose to go out to sea. Well, this is Irma. This is Jose. Right now, a Category 2 hurricane with winds of 100 miles per hour. It's very close to the Bahamas, and I want to show you the track here and the latest advisory on this storm. It's not a very well-organized system at all, as, as much as it was earlier uh, over the last couple of days. Here's the current current advisory has winds of 100 miles an hour. It's not moving all that much, moving north at about 12. But watch the track of this storm moving up, around, and then back towards the U.S. coast. Where does it go? I'm not even going to try to tell you because this one's going to be a very tough one to forecast over the next couple of days. This is off the southeast coast here on Saturday at 2 o'clock. A lot of time to watch this storm, but we will be talking about Jose for the next week or so. Right now, it's a Category 1. That's the forecast for it to be. So uh, we're not talking about a monster. Much more on this. I've got the 10-day forecast as well coming up at uh, 6 o'clock. All righty. Well, a project for hikers and bikers hits another bump in the road. Literally, after decades of debate, lawsuits, the Klingle Valley Trail, it finally opened. But just weeks after that ribbon cutting, the trail is falling apart. This is pathetic. The small trail cost millions of dollars. News 4's Mark Seagraves is working for you today, finding out who's going to pay to fix it. The trail has only been open about 100 days. This is what it's supposed to look like all along the trail with this gravel alongside of the asphalt. But at several stretches along the trail, we found places where it was already eroding along the edges. As a road, it was here 100 years before it fell apart, about 100 before it fell apart. Barbara Ionis has lived in the Woodley Park neighborhood of Northwest D.C. for 40 years. She recalls the debates and protests over what to do with the three-quarter mile stretch of Klingle Road after a flood washed it out in 1991. In 2004, the D.C. Council voted to spend millions of local and federal tax dollars to restore the area as a hiker-biker trail. In late June of this year, Mayor Bowser cut the ribbon on the new $6 million Klingle Valley Trail that connects Woodley Park to Cleveland Park. But less than three months after that ribbon cutting, erosion is eating away at the new trail. And some of the new trees planted here are dying. Another concern for some neighbors, all of this gravel you see here that has washed out onto the trail. It makes me think this is very dangerous and for anyone coming down here after dusk, 